Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insights, a show where we deep dive into cloud native security. And today we have with us Radhan Triplani, President and CEO of Tigera. Radhan, first of all, it's uh, great to have you on the show. Thank you, Sapna. Great to be here. You're announcing uh, Calico Cloud, which is a pay as you go software as a service for Kubernetes security and observability. I want to talk a bit about that, but before we do, uh, talk about that, as we were talking earlier, that uh, as this cloud native landscape is uh, becoming more and more uh, busy and crowded, cloud was supposed to democratize things. It was supposed to make things simpler. But if you look at Kubernetes, still there are so many knobs to be turned that it becomes overwhelming. Which also means that you know you cannot keep up, and security is what takes a hit, and then you know business continuity gets disrupted. So no matter how innovative you are, if your services are not up and running, there is no point. So before we talk about Calico Cloud, can you talk about the need for either managed services or offering fully services to, to help people to focus on their application and not have to worry too much about all the background noise. Yeah, no, first to acknowledge your point, definitely there's a lot of complexity on Kubernetes. Again, the reason is fairly obvious. It was designed in, in Google and they needed the level of complexity. But if you look at the average organization with one DevOps engineer trying to manage all this infrastructure, uh, he or she just simply doesn't have the ability to deal with that. And in all our interviews with these DevOps people in these companies, one thing we have discovered is they all deeply and passionately care about keeping their environment secure. They just don't have the ability, the time, or the skills, or the tools to do that. And that's certainly, honestly, why they skip past this notion of security. And that is incredibly worrisome because it could it could actually have an incredibly massive negative effect on the entire Kubernetes industry if if some of these workloads start to get compromised. It's could, it could have a very negative halo effect on the entire industry. So one of the things we're noticing from all the customers we've worked with is as they've started to mature in their deployments, uh, they've run into an incredible level of uh, complexity as they try to debug these applications. Most of these applications have very stringent SLAs. And because of the abstraction that Kubernetes provides, debugging these applications at runtime in a that, that, that have a distributed architecture and a dynamic infrastructure becomes extremely complex for them. And there really aren't any good solutions in the market uh, to for observability specific to the Kubernetes environment. And that's one of the reasons we're very excited to have gone back and based on customer feedback to build a, a purpose built for Kubernetes observability solution that provides extremely rich information in the context of services and to be able to drill deep, starting at the application level down to the process, to the socket and down to a packet capture and to stitch all this together and give it to them in context is the first observability solution purpose built for Kubernetes that we're announcing today. And we're very excited about it. And in terms of <clears throat> what we have noticed is that security and observability are, are go hand in hand together because of the, as the root of it <clears throat> is really the ability to get very granular data at runtime and you can manifest the value either through security or observability. And so that's what we're announcing today, a very rich observability solution that is purpose-built for Kubernetes that is designed to empower and enable developers to troubleshoot issues very quickly through a self-service model is what we're announcing today. Now let's talk about uh, Calico Cloud. Um, what was the reason that you, uh, of course, you know, you already alluded to some of the points that are need, but you know, why you're launching it now? Yeah, so one of the things we have done over the last 24 to 30 months, I feel that we're very proud of is we have taken our solution to Fortune 500 companies, some of the largest financial institutions on the planet where they care deeply about security. They set the bar very high for security. And we've not only helped them succeed, we have not only earned their business, but we have earned repeat business from them. And we're very proud of that. And one of the things we have found about these organizations is that they have the luxury of having 
some incredibly great talent in their organization on the security side, on the Kubernetes side, because they're able to attract that talent. Second is they have very deep expertise in security that they've built over a couple of decades. So they, they've been able to do that. And the third thing is they have very deep pockets because they make hundreds of millions of dollars of investment into security. And that's the reason they're able to secure their workloads and gain advantage from Kubernetes. And what we are trying to do with Calico Cloud, and the reason we are so excited with that is we are now packaging up a lot of those lessons learned into a technology called Calico Cloud. And <clears throat> pardon me, we want to democratize that and take it out to the next 5,000 companies. You know, if you have a, a company with just a couple of thousand employees, maybe two or three DevOps people, they don't have the luxury of resources, the expertise, or the bandwidth to be able to do what the Fortune 500 companies are doing. But they have comparable requirements around security because they are a target for any hacker out there. So through Calico Cloud, we are now going to make available to the next 5,000 companies what only the largest companies had access to in terms of knowledge, resources, and that's what we're very excited about. Can you talk about some of the core components of uh, Calico Cloud? So at a high level, first is it's a SaaS service and uh, it's a pay-as-you-go model. People can try it out, use it. They pay for what they, they have. That's more on the business side. In terms of just the functionality, they get comparable functionality to what I just talked about. So, you know, literally within a few minutes, they can activate it. They can establish fine-grained, not solid controls uh, for their Kubernetes cluster. Everything's sitting inside that. They can integrate with external security services like SIMs or firewalls. They can establish DNS policies. On, that's on the not side. The second bucket is east-west. They can establish very fine-grained east-west controls at the host level, at the container level, at the application level, and that gives them defense in depth, make sure that even if there's an APT inside the cluster, it prevents any kind of data exfiltration. The third bucket is they have access to additional security controls, like they can encrypt all data in motion. They get access to intrusion prevention system, intrusion detection system that's purpose-built for Kubernetes. And if they have some specific compliance requirements like PCI, HIPAA, SOC 2, uh, they get all that out of the box. And the final and the fourth one is they get access to a very rich set of Kubernetes native observability features through which they can very rapidly debug issues by looking at a dynamic service graph to know exactly what's happening inside the cluster at runtime. And uh, to be able to systematically debug that as a double click at the application level, process level, socket level, or even do a dynamic packet capture to understand what's going on at runtime and to be able to debug these applications is, is those are the four powerful feature sets that we're releasing as part of Calico Cloud, not sort controls, east-west controls, additional set of security compliance controls and observability that anyone can get access to activate in minutes, runs on any Kubernetes distro, any cloud, any app. They just pay for what they use and they're no long-term contracts. And you already mentioned that uh, they can plug in, uh, they can bring in their own components. It's, 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 it's so open-ended, but it's still flexible. So it allows them to leverage whatever technologies and tools that they want. Uh, what clouds do you support? Is this uh, because we live in a multi-cloud hybrid cloud world? Yeah, so we support all the all the clouds out there: uh, AWS, Azure, Google, IBM Cloud. Uh, so there's the fundamentally there's nothing inherently proprietary in our technology. We've gone out of out of a way to make sure there's our open standards. We work with <clears throat> existing CNIs in in these clouds, which is an important requirement. But all the major public clouds out there, we support, and all the Kubernetes distros, which is also another significant part, because a lot of customers have a mix of workloads on-prem in the cloud, across clouds. And by the way, they also have workloads running uh, in containers and VMs. Everything I've spoken about works for containers and VMs. And also they have workloads, some of them running on Windows, and in addition to Unix, and you need a single single solution that works across both Unix and Windows, which is what we provide. Uh, it may be early to talk about it, but we are also uh, seeing uh, 
a kind of explosion of edge computing. When we talk about edge computing, we're not talking about IoT devices. We are talking about edge data centers. Uh, so is that also in your radar when you look at Calico Cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So both from our design, so we have our distributed architecture. So from day one, we've actually designed it for an environment like that. And also from a resource uh, uh, and just a compute resource utilization, we're extremely efficient, which becomes incredibly important in edge scenarios. Uh, and, and also the communication <clears throat> for edge, you know, in terms of when you implement your control plane, the design of your control plane and how you keep everything synchronized is very important. And we have an architecture that's been designed from the ground up for Edge, although that was not our primary go to market, it was designed. So we're, we're a perfect solution for that kind of an architecture. Pratan, thank you so much for taking time out today to talk about Calibre Cloud and the importance of observability and how you are bringing that aspect also, because as you also alluded earlier that without observability, <laughs> security uh, doesn't uh, make much sense. So first of all, thank you for your time today. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you, Sato. Enjoy the conversation.